Praise the Lord. It's good to be in service this Friday evening. Now, this is a little bit different. We normally do not have service on Friday evening, but we're all kind of shut in, so we might as well go ahead and learn something from the Word of God. It's good to be here tonight, and uh, we're thankful for everybody that is listening on YouTube, and we do want you to like, subscribe, and to uh, hit the notifications bell, okay, on the uh, YouTube channel. And also, we do want to remember tomorrow, we will uh, record our Saturday evening service, and then Sunday also, okay? So join us back on YouTube tomorrow and Sunday. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, look to uh, our Bible reading this evening. We're going to be in the book of Hebrews, and I want to read one verse of Scripture. We will cover more of this portion of Scripture as we go on uh, in the message, but Hebrews chapter 6, and I want to begin reading in verse 1. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrines of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. And then I want to turn over to 2 Peter chapter 3, and I want to be... Uh, reading there in verse 18, 2 Peter chapter 3, and verse 18. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. And using these two portions of Scripture, especially focusing on Hebrews 6 and 1, we want to preach tonight about perfection. And let's look to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you, God, for your goodness, God, for your power working in our lives, for your salvation, and God, for everybody that is listening to this message. Uh, we ask your blessing now, God, not only upon the ministering of your word, but upon each one that is listening. God, we know you are able to perfect that which you have started in our lives. You're able to bring us to that place of perfection and maturity in Christ God, help us, each one, to look to you tonight uh, with that end in mind and, and just allow you to have your way in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You know, there are those who say, and really many say, it's something fairly common in the church world, that we are only sinners saved by grace and that no one is perfect. And they make excuses and they make provision for the flesh and for sin. And uh, they uh, really hinder people from growing in God because they get this in their mind that you can't do any better. No, that's not, that's not what the Bible teaches. Thank God, brother, sister, that you and I can, as we read, we can grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We not only see it here in these two portions of Scripture that we read tonight, but throughout the Bible we see many places God challenging challenging us to be perfect, to be mature, to be obedient, to be fruitful Christians who succeed at living for God and who bring glory to Almighty God. Now that ought to be the desire of our life, not to bring glory to ourselves, but to glorify the one who saved us and washed us in his blood and the one who is working in our lives and bringing about this fruit as we yield ourselves to him to bring glory to God. Amen. Okay, there are those, brother and sister, uh, uh, who, who look upon this, this uh, teaching of perfection and, and they think that we're trying to teach that we're saved by our works. No, we are not saved by our, by our works. But having said that, brother and sister, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. God is working in us, and God can perfect that which he is doing in our lives. We can liken perfection. Maybe you think about perfection, and you think maybe, well, uh, there's never a problem. There's never room for growth. It's not what we're saying tonight. Maybe we can liken to what we're trying to convey to someone who is an experienced uh, worker, someone who has been trained and someone who has gained experience maybe from years of doing a particular trade or a particular job, and they no longer make the mistakes that they once did, and they no longer 
have to be supervised as closely maybe as as others are watched over they maybe they're giving given more responsibility and they're they're uh, trusted and and they they are looked to because they know that uh, it is known that they will accomplish the task and and not only will they accomplish the task but they are able to train other people also maybe it is said of them that they are a perfect employee does that mean that there's never been any time that they failed no but overall, okay, they do things right. They can be uh, trusted. They are a good, faithful employee who knows what to do. And if they don't know what to do, they'll find out, amen? They'll find out. Well, as Christians, you and I are not to stay babies, okay? We're not to stay newbies in Christ. We're not to stay beginners, if you will, but we are to to, to grow as we read unto you. And if we were to go back before chapter 6 and verse 1, we read it to you. He said, therefore, leaving the principles of Christ. Why did he say therefore? Because there was something preceding this verse of Scripture in chapter 6 of Hebrews verse 1 that bring us to this point, okay, because of the previous things that have been said. Well, let's read some of the previous things that have been said. We want to drop back just a little bit to Hebrews chapter 5, and we're going to begin reading in verse 8. Hebrews chapter 5, beginning in verse 8. It begins to speak about Jesus here. Listen to what it says about the Lord Jesus Christ. It said, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Called of God, a high priest after the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. For in the time you ought to be teachers of, uh, excuse me, you ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become as such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that is use, that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full of age, even those by reason of use to have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Therefore, as we read in our Bible setting, leaving the principles of the doctrines of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Thank God, brother and sister, you and I can grow and we can become mature and we can leave the milk of the word and we can partake of or, or uh, spiritually uh, digest or ingest or however you want to say it, the meat of the word of Almighty God. Amen. You know, Paul wrote to the church at Corinth in chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians in chapter 11, and there's some very childish things that were going on in the church. There was division, there was envy, there was strife, there was sin that was blatantly allowed, and things were not done about it, nothing was said about it. And he said to them, uh, he said to them, you know, they were all caught up in, in being seen and, and uh, uh, this one thinking they're more spiritual than that one. Brother and sister, when we think that way, we're not spiritual at all. Amen. The spirit of God brings humility. Listen to what he said to them. But when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. You know, it's time to put away childish things. It's time, brother and sister, for you and I to become uh, mature and for to to uh, allow God to perfect things in our lives, to bring them to a place of maturity so that you and I, by reason of use, brother and sister, by reason of use, when we just not only hear the word of God, but we take the word of God and we apply it in our lives. We are exercised by it. We are made stronger by it because we use it. What's the term that they use? 
maybe in, in uh, people who are going to the gym or whatever the case may be. They say, if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. Well, brothers and sisters, the same way in the spiritual. God gives us these things. We need to use them in our lives and we need to become strong in almighty God. You know, we don't want to stay babies. I remember that used to really bother me. I've got three older brothers and, uh, you know, they're, they're older, all of them older than me, of course, and, and by quite, quite a few years, some of them. And, and uh, I remember they used to tell me uh, something they used to say to me when I was a little boy. They'd say, oh, you're being a baby. You're a baby. Man, that would really make me mad because I didn't want to be a baby. Well, you know, I don't want to be a baby in God. I don't want to be a baby to God. Be babies have to learn things, don't they? They don't stay babies. They grow. They grow very quickly. Before you know it, they're uh, going to school before you know it, they're getting out of school, getting married, whatever, whatever the case may be. But first of all, babies must learn to walk. Babies must learn to walk. We have some young children that live next door or neighbors next door. And the grandmother uh, had them outside yesterday. And of course, we kept our distance, you know, we doing the social distancing thing. And but we could see them next door uh, uh, out by the uh, sidewalk as I went out to check the mail. They got a little boy. He's probably about two or three. He's running all over the place. Then they had a smaller baby girl, and she she probably is about one years old. She I remember seeing her crawling out in the in their yard, crawling around. But this time she wasn't. She was crawling, but she got up and she was there with her grandmother, and she was walking. She began to walk. And, and yes, she fell a couple of times, but she got right back up and she kept walking. It may be painful at times and it may be, be uh, uh, fearful, maybe even a little bit. But, oh, you know, when she was going good and I, and I saw her and I said, oh, you're such a big girl. You're, you're walking around. She smiled and she laughed and she was flapping her little hands around. She was excited. She was enjoying the fact that she had a newfound freedom and a joy that she could walk like uh, others did and she could move around and she was even running a little bit well you know babies have to learn to do that don't they though they may fall a few, a few times you get up and you keep walking babies also i have to learn brother and sister that they have to stop making a mess on themselves are you here tonight huh you know they, they have to get past wearing diapers and having to have someone come along and clean them up and and making a mess on themselves. They need to learn to put the mess where the mess belongs. Come on now. You got to potty train them. They need to learn, hey, I need to get this stuff away from me. Nobody running around uh, wearing it anymore. I got to get out of these diapers. I need to put the mess away. Well, you know, we need to learn. As a Christian, we need to learn. I got to put the mess away. I got to keep getting involved in things that dirty me. I need to, I need to flush this stuff down the toilet, if you will, get it out of my life, get away from it. Listen to me tonight. Brother and sister, the Bible said that evil communication corrupts good manners. It tells you and I that we're to come out and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and he will receive you to, our, to himself. Brother and sister, many times people become sullied, they become dirty, they become, they become, they're in a mess in their lives because they don't get rid of that junk and those influences. Well, that's, that's my friend. You know, if somebody is causing me to do things that are, or, or influencing me to do things that are wrong against God, that is not a friend, my, my, my brother and sister. A friend is someone that will help you do what God wants you to do. We need to get these things, these influences, whether it's that, whether it's entertainments, people's music, people's uh, things that they watch on television or whatever, on the internet or whatever the case may be. Brother and sister, these things, if they're selling you, they're causing you to be dirty, they're causing you to make a mess in your life, you need to get them out of your life. You need to flush them down the spiritual toilet and get them away from you. We must learn also to, a baby must learn to eat on their own, uh, uh, don't they? They have to learn to eat on their own. They can't be fed by mom or dad the rest of their life, but they have to learn brother and sister, that I've got to feed. I've got to learn to feed myself. Thank God, you know, for people that can help us and all these things. And we know that God, God put uh, people in the ministry for the perfecting of the saints. And what we're doing tonight, we're putting some spiritual food on the table, but you're the one that has to take it 
and put it to work, put it in your life. Amen. We've got to put it in our lives. We can't just depend on others also to feed us all the time. There are times that we may not have a service or a recording put up on YouTube. My friend, you can read the Bible. You can pray. Are you with me today? You can think about the things of God. You can think about good things. You can think about virtuous things. You can think about lovely things. You can think about godly things. And you can uh, commune and pray unto Almighty God. You can walk with God. And God will speak to your heart and the Lord will absolutely feed you. Amen. You got to learn. You got to learn, brother and sister, to, to do these things in your life. Children have to mature. And they have to realize, don't they? Just because I don't always see my parents doesn't mean that they're gone. I remember being a little boy and you, you, know, you go to kindergarten and, and mom leaves you there and she walks out the door. It's like, oh, wait a minute. I'm not used to this. And many little kids cry when that happens. You know, some are happy and they're uh, there with uh, other kids and whatever. But there are some that cry. You know, they're not used to mom not being there. And, you know, just because mom and dad aren't there, they go to work or they leave you at, at uh, uh, kindergarten or or whatever the case may be at school, okay, it doesn't mean that, that they don't love you and that they, they're not there. Well, brother and sister, we have to realize because we don't always see, we don't always see uh, the way or what God is doing or, or we don't always, we don't always uh, uh, understand what's going on. It doesn't mean that God is not there. Are you with me today? It doesn't mean that he doesn't love you. It doesn't mean that he's forsaken you, my friend. God's got it all under control. Brother and sister, thank God. Thank God. Maybe God is having confidence in us. And maybe God knows, you know what? You're mature enough. You don't always have to feel something. You don't always have to understand it. You can trust me. You can put your faith in me. And you know what? The Lord, when we do that to, with him, he will not fail us. He will not fail us. We are to grow and to strive for perfection, for maturity, for fruitfulness, as dear children are obeying our heavenly father. Second Corinthians chapter six, beginning in verse 17, therefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord I already touched on this and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you and will be a, be a father unto you and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, doing what? Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Did you read that? Did you see that there? <laughs> cleansing ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Amen. God wants us to be perfected. Romans chapter 12 and verse one. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Philippians chapter three. Beginning in verse 13, brethren, I count not myself to, ap to apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Come on, leave the past in the past. Don't go back into trying to be what you used to be. Go forward with God being what God wants you to be. Listen to what he said here. One thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth under those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many be perfect. Man, we keep reading this word, don't we? Be thus minded. And if anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the, excuse me, same rule, let us mind the same thing. Don't go backwards. No backsliding, church. Let's go forward in the Lord. So how do we strive for perfection? How do we, how do we do this? We do it by submitting to God and submitting to his word and spirit, the word of God. We hear it and it's read and, and it's preached and it's taught. Amen. For Christ, uh, Paul wrote first Corinthians chapter one and verse 17, sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, 
It is the power of God, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Ephesians 4 and 11, he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Okay, brothers, just to thank God that God has that word taught and preached to you and I. That word builds faith. In Romans 10 and 17, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Not only does the word build faith, not only does God have it preached and taught to you and I, but that is the sword of the Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit deals with our hearts and he uses the word of Almighty God. He works in our lives. John 14 and 25, these things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring to remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. The word of God. Romans 5 and 5, okay, the, the, the Holy Spirit also gives, gives love into our hearts, and hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to you and I, amen? We've got to apply these things in our lives. We've got to, brother and sister, build up our faith in God, not only by the word of God, but by the spirit of God, Jude verse 20, but ye beloved build up yourselves in your most holy, on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Amen. Brother and sister, we thank God. We thank God. We can put these things to work in our lives. Amen. We can learn the word of God. We can obey the word of God. We can live the word of Almighty God. We can grow. We can be perfected in God. Amen. You don't have to fail. You don't have to sin. I know this is different. I know that there's a lot of places that they will not teach and preach this kind of this uh, uh, teaching, brother, sister, but the Bible teaches it. You know, he tells us in the book of Romans chapter six, that sin shall not have dominion over you and I. It will not control us. Brother, sister, thank God by the power of God, brother, sister, you and I, are above and we have control over sin if we'll let it be real in our lives Jesus will help us and we brothers and sisters can live the way that God wants us to live amen finally tonight you know we learn things from the word of God they are for you and I they're for all of us it's not just for the pastor it's not just for the pastor's wife it's not just for some some minister or, or something like that but sister it's for every one of us it always has been and it always will will be. It's for you. God wants you to be victorious. He wants you to be more than a conqueror. He wants you, my friend, to absolutely have that rightful place in Christ as, as one that is seated in heavenly places with him, not defeated, not beat down, my friend. You can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth you. But will we let him perfect these things in our lives? Stop making excuses. No more excuses for ourselves. You know what our prayer should be? And we know that God can do it. He'll answer this prayer. Lord, help me to do better. My friend, there is a high calling, as Paul said. It's not low. It's a high calling. Tonight, as we bow our heads and we close our eyes in reverence to the Lord, will we allow Jesus to perfect his work in our lives? Will we allow him to lift us up as we sing to higher ground? Tonight, as we pray and we look to him in faith, he can do it and you can do it. God bless you tonight is our prayer. You pray. Amen.